Welcome everyone. This is the Kid DC Wrestling. We are back once again with another video. AEW Revolution is coming out this Sunday night. This is actually the first time that AEW is doing a pay-per-view on a Sunday night. Um, but Saturday night, Sunday night, even though me personally, I prefer being on a Saturday night. Um, it's still going to be a really good pay-per-view. Um, we're not going to waste any time. We're going to get right into it. We have a Casino Tag Team Royal for a future AEW World Tag Team Championship match. You got Bear Country versus Dark Order. Alex Reynolds and John Silver versus Dark Order. Evil Uno and Stu Grayson versus The Inner Circle versus Butcher and the Blade uh, versus Private Party versus Top Flight versus Death Triangle versus Varsity Blondes versus Matt Seidel and Mike Seidel versus so-called uncensored SCU versus Natural Nightmares versus Chaos Project and to be announced. So it looks like a uh, new tag team might be debuting because as I'm looking at this on um, Wikipedia, it's saying here that to be announced. So maybe a new tag team might debut. I don't I don't know. But, um, you know, that that's what's going to happen. But if I had to pick, I'll probably just go with uh, Dev Triangle. Um <laughs> I'm just gonna go with Death Triangle, um, because besides that, Death Triangle. Who I mean, who's gonna really win the match? I mean, well, you could say Dark Order. I, I'll go Dark Order for second, but probably number one, Death Triangle. Okay, so we have a big money match as Adam Page will take on Matt Hardy, where the winner will receive the loser's 2021 first quarter earnings. This is this is a weird concept. Like, it's weird because like, really like the winner's gonna receive, but hey, they're getting paid. So, what? Um, I got Adam Page win this one. It's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a decent match, but um, I think Hangman Adam Page is gonna win. Um, I really don't see Matt Hardy winning this one. Um, yeah. All right, so we have a tag team match play of Miro and Kip Sabian taking on the best friends. Miro, he needs to dominate. Miro, Sabian win this match. Miro just dominates. Miro just beats the heck out of Orange Cassidy. He just beats the heck out of Chuck Taylor. Let Miro dominate. Let Miro dominate. Dominate, 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 and dominate. Because that is what Miro needs to do. I don't want to hear and see Miro complaining about his video games. I want to see Miro dominating. So I think Miro and Kip Sabian will win this match that is my prediction okay so we have a face of the revolution ladder match for a future AEW TNT championship match we have cody versus scorpio sky versus pento el zero miedo versus lance archer lance archer versus max caster versus to be announced so there will be a six competitor um, I think it's going to be Brock Lesnar or Ryback, the PG legend Ryback. Um, nah, but in all seriousness, I, I really don't know. It, it could be anybody. Hell, it could be me. I could show up. Nah, I ain't going to show up. But, but, like, I think, honestly, whoever the sixth person is, I think Cody should win. And I know what you're thinking. But, DC, didn't you say, like, a few months ago that Cody doesn't need the TNT title why does Cody need to get another shot? And I'll tell you why. Last night on AW Dynamite, we saw Sean Spears, FTR. You know, we saw JJ Dillon. We saw Tully Blanchard. And look who was in the background. We saw Art Anderson. And what and what were they flashing, people? Number four. And what does number four mean? The four horsemen. The only sad thing is that Ric Flair can't be a part of this and uh rick flair did uh and that he did say in the interview that uh um he's not on good terms with uh you know the rest of the uh four horsemen because basically they didn't like comfort his well he they didn't give him like comfort or just didn't call him um after his uh, son reed died so um that's kind of crazy and sad when you think about it but um back to what i'm saying to why cody should win this match because if you go also back, if you go back a few months ago, Cody, like a lot of his promos, a lot of his matches, um, 
What was he flashing? He was flashing at four. It's like he wanted to happen. He was teasing it's going to happen. You have Cody turn heel. Maybe you can do the slow, slow burn, but you have Cody turn heel. You have the four horsemen. Cody, Sean Spears, and FTR. That's that's a good stable. And, and, and yes, it's another heel stable, but it's, it could be good. It could be good. Maybe that's probably why uh, Sean Spear Sean Spear lost to uh, Cody at all out. I don't know, but you know. Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked here. Um, let's see here. We have a street fight. We have Team Taz, Brian Cage, and Ricky Starks taking on Darby Allen and Sting. This is Sting's first AEW. I mean, first match. Since his last match against Seth Rollins for the WWE Championship at the 2015 Night of Champions pay-per-view event. And um, the one thing that I'm very concerned about this match is will Sting be able to go? And I really hope that Sting will be okay after this match. And after this match is all said and done that Sting will be okay and he didn't take no major injuries and stuff like that because Sting is like what 61 years old and he's out there getting I mean just going through crazy you know what I mean like if something crazy happens to Sting like how like what what happened to Matt Hardy at all AEW all out was crazy but man if like if something crazy happens to Sting Oh, my God. The heat on AEW would be massive. Because remember, it was Tony Khan and AEW who did say that Sting was medically cleared. And if he goes out and he and something bad happens to him, that the, the blood's going to be on AEW hand, hands. And I hate to say that. And then people are going to be saying, oh, see, this is why Sting should stay retired. But I'm, I don't want to make this a negative review. I don't want to make this a negative video. This, I mean, a negative preview, but I don't want to make this negative. I want to be positive, and I'm positive that Sting will be able to go out and deliver because, you know, like last night, we were all thinking Shaq was going to do bad, and what did he do? He impressed us all. So I have the same outburst for Sting. I think Sting will do well. This is going to be a great street fight, and as much as I would like to see Team Taz get the win, um, especially, you know, because it's Brian Cage and Ricky Starks, but um, I think, because, again, this is Sting's first match back. You have Darby Allen and Sting pick up the win. All right, so we're getting to the championship matches now. Um, we have the AEW Women's World Championship being defended as Akara Shida defends against, and sorry, once again, if I mispronounce her name, Rio Mizumami. Um, you know, as much as I think it's time for Sheeta to win the belt, I mean, to drop the belt, I mean, she's been champion for almost a year now. For crying out loud, she literally is the longest reigning champion in AEW right now. And her feud has been, like, meh, in my opinion. Like, I mean, it, it hasn't been a bad reign, but it isn't a good reign. It's not a legendary reign, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a meh reign. That's why I think it's time for Sheeta to drop the belt. And they could have had her drop the belt to someone like Britt Baker, but they were like, nope, ain't going to do that. So I think Sheeta wins here, and then she drops the belt to Britt, in my opinion. Okay, so now we got the AW World Tag Team Championship match player. We got the Young Bucks, Matt Jackson and Nick Jackson, taking on the Inner Circle, Chris Jericho and MJF. I have the Young Bucks retaining the championships here. Um, due to Sammy's Sammy Guevara interfering in this match, um, yes, I do believe Sammy will get in this match, and the inner circle will lose this match. So the Young Bucks will retain their AEW World Tag Team Championships. And then in our main event, player, this match is one of the biggest matches, if not the biggest match of the show. Kenny Omega versus John Mark Moxley, part three. Part one, we got a lights out match. Part two, we had a gentleman's agreement. But part three, to end the trilogy, to end this 
crazy and spectacle rivalry. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenny Omega and Moxie will collide in an exploding barbed wire death match for the AEW World Championship. And you know what, bro? People can say that, oh, this is horrible. Why are they doing this? This is some Vince Russo type booking. I'm not going to watch the match. You know what? If you don't watch the match, then just don't watch the match. Now, me personally, I don't have a problem with this match. I think this match is going to be insane. I just don't want nobody getting serious hurt, especially with Moxley because he's about to be a father soon. Um, this is going to be a great match. I'm really, really thinking Omega's going to win the title. Obviously, like, that's predictable. Um, you know, but, man, this match is going to be crazy because they're going to get thrown in the barbed wire. They're going to explode. It's just going to get crazy. Um, I know a lot of people have been saying that maybe just maybe a New Japan star will appear. Like, you'll have maybe Okada show up. And if that happens, it happens. But, yeah, Omega still wins. So... That is my AEW um, revolution predictions. Um, I will be doing a review right after the show ends, obviously. And so um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, like, comment. Tell me what your thoughts on AEW revolution this Sunday night, March 7th, live on pay-per-view. And so, uh, yeah.